Greetings and welcome to a new narration done by Dr. Tormund. The following story may or may not prove rather sensitive to some listeners. Discretion is advised and consider this your one and only warning. Now with that out of the way, let us proceed. As soon as I heard that a woman had burned her own son alive in his room because she thought he was possessed by a demon, I knew this wasn't going to be just another walk in the park. My heart is in shambles upon hearing that, but it's actually... It's actually something I've had the misfortune of growing used to hearing by now. I had received a call from the woman's husband and said he was tired of watching his town fall victim to the forces of hell. His words. Claiming the police are doing little to nothing about missing persons and deaths, leading them to often close the case with an apology and condolences. Coincidentally enough, the husband had friends who knew a client of mine and had referenced me. Usually I charge a lot because I gain results. He accepted and I began searching news reports about the area, also informing him that we could meet the following day. He was right about one thing. The police weren't doing much about anything in this town. The <clears throat> forces of hell thing was yet to be determined. But reading through the most recent crime reports, I found in the rather desolate public records building more proof that what he was saying might in fact be true. And this is how I found out about a certain town in Florida that I'll never visit again. I won't be giving you my name because, frankly, that's not important anymore. I do work as a private eye and have been for seven years and ongoing. But after this one, I think I'm quite done. You see, I usually do not investigate the, um, quote-unquote, normal cases. I take a variety of cases, depending these aren't the only ones, though. And usually I'll take up those that detectives and the police will just stick to keeping closed. The ones they don't dare speak about to their families because it haunts them at night. <laughs> I guess you could say that I'm not wired like most people. I yearn for the unknown. Solving a whodunit over the years gave me that satisfaction of keeping the streets clean one bad guy at a time. But sometimes, it's just not enough for me, and new killers are born every day. I'm only one guy, but I'll collaborate if something is out of my reach, even with the stranger things. Upon my time under the batch, I've come to see things in a different way. When you've had to witness corpse after corpse left behind in a serial killer's wake with a firm belief that God intended it to be that way, you can get a little depressed and even angry. I've been in interviews with madmen that explain they've tasted the flesh of an angel and had just showed them the truth about heaven and death. How do people truly get this sick, you ask? It's easy. Trauma, guilt, sadness, anger. The list goes on. You get used to the yammering and the clinging to a logical or spiritual reason behind the insidious intent. But what about the people who cling to the belief that they are being told that their actions are just by some higher power? but that same higher power is actually real. They could be schizophrenic, suffering a psychotic break, the usual. But in some cases, it's more than meets the eye. I've come across a case where a 26-year-old male was convinced that their co-worker was some kind of antichrist. This caused them to start a YouTube channel where no one believed him, explaining there were more people like him out there trying to prove his belief until finally one day 
He buys a gun from the local arms dealer and blows the innocent man's brains out after work in the parking lot. Don't bother looking for the YouTube channel. My morbid curiosity won me over, but even I couldn't find it. Sure, it sounds like a nut job, and the thing is, you won't hear about these kinds of things in the news sometimes. You won't know who any of these people are unless you know somebody or you were there. What police won't tell you is that the man had just gotten back from a retreat in the mountains, not close to home, and something came back with him. The group that this man was involved with was apparently still being investigated by their own country's police force. They had found and reported back to the states several decomposing bodies and recently dug up graves in a large open field near the cult's compound. A church building housing a rather peculiar looking shrine and human remains caked to the supposed deity. Now, that particular case is still ongoing. Why? Well, because the supposed cult leader in question was said to show unprecedented strength and abilities unknown to the agents that went in to detain him, and of course, subsequently, failed. To date, I've heard the FBI opened an investigation of some kind of government task force agency. Believe what you want. But you won't hear about this kind of thing anywhere else, I'm sure of it. So yeah, I've come across some interesting things in this line of work. And that was just one of them. I would normally share more and tell you to even look me up anytime and get in contact if you are experiencing something unexplainable. But after some of the more recent events, I've decided I had to go under the radar. It's important that you understand I take my job very seriously, but besides that, I do value my own life a little more. I guess I'm telling you this here because there is a genuine fear I've grown for this place as the days roll by through my investigation. It's not just the case itself, but there's an air here that fills me with the sense that I'm being observed from unseen eyes constantly. Needless to say, however, I had to see what I could do about it. It's not every day you get a call like that. The meeting went fine and the husband had his head mostly down. The man explained he used to be involved with town committees and crime watchers, but he didn't say any more on that and left the building after our meeting was finished. Before the thought of getting a room somewhere had crossed my mind, I looked over a map of the town once more to see what exactly I was getting into. Now, typically I work in more urban areas and deal with city folk and the like. This town is large with a low population and the inhabitants can carry a heavy, sovereign accent. The sticks is where I was, and I wasn't used to that. I was vulnerable and wasn't prepared for this at all. In these parts of the state, Thick vegetation is seemingly terraforming the entire landscape. The sounds of crickets, frogs and wildlife are always present even during the day and distant humps of swamps are guttural. Long dirt roads snake off in various directions with acres of space bought by homeowners and settlers. If you had lived there, your neighbors were a good half a mile away at most. If I were investigating a murder there, I would yield dead ends most of the time and people would likely get away with it. People would be found overdosed on some substance or prescription drugs in a ditch or in some abandoned farmhouse decaying alone. In some cases, those overdoses are actually quite literally murder victims. This state has a black hole of general filth and depravity. All of these are more eventually lead to more events of misfortune and utter chaos. Those bodies are indeed left behind by some prowler of the dark, both human and not. Even local legends of hauntings and cryptids are often told by natives in a lot of sovereign states if you don't pay attention. Not only to inform or scare, but to warn any people who might get curious about what may be in those woods behind their friend's house or what trail leads to whatever mystery 
etc., etc. Despite these things, above all else, I will tell a story that you should listen to anyway. During my investigation, I visited the home to take it all in. The house was half burned, of course. Being quite a distance away, the neighbors called 911 after the first sighting of the raging fire from their window. I couldn't begin to imagine the feeling of being the husband. That evening, he was working a night shift and had recently received a raise due to his standing in the company. Now, to give you an idea of what I'm capable of, I've got directional mics, sonar, thermals, metal detectors, drones, a couple of those creepy surveillance vans, laptops and hardware that cost me a fortune, you name it. I will find you, and I will make sure I do a better job than the detective who won't look for anything out of the ordinary. But, that said, I also have tech that can aid my more, um, different agendas, if you will. The town I went to that involved the burning was the one time I ever questioned if I should quit at all and sell every single one of my gadgets to a pawn shop or somewhere on the dark web. Hey, what do you want from me? Sometimes I have to reach out to bad people to dig up the bad things. I will not be disclosing the main location of this place to you, but as stated before, it is in Florida. I am sorry, but I don't want any more people hurt thinking they can be a hero or much, much worse. Don't ever think about looking for this town. Never in my life had I seen someone so frigid and scared when I went to interview that woman at the town's tiny police station just off the highway. The cops basically let me do whatever I wanted. They said she was getting the max penalty no matter what anyway, because the judge had already made that clear once they found the body. I can't say that I don't disagree. The act of doing such a thing was incredibly vile. Her husband explained to me that they were religious and went to church every Sunday, so he doesn't understand what his wife could have been thinking. Besides this, they seem to be a normal, conforming family with minor problems. She didn't have any drugs in her system, and the husband claimed that the boy had been rebelling against them since he just turned 14 at the time, conveniently also having met a new girlfriend. I went to his school about 8 miles away to do some more digging. Apparently, the boy was an honor roll student and had a love of football but would often stay out late smelling like booze upon coming home sometimes. Still, that should have never been any reason to torch your only son alive. I had my tape recorder handy for her interview. I couldn't even get many words out of the woman, save for a few screams and shouts. She would often repeat, God shouldn't allow this. He had to be cleansed. As well as, I had no choice. That wasn't my son over and over in short bursts. She would just stare up and wail in total sorrow and pain, like she didn't want to burn her only son alive, yet was somehow forced into doing it. The police said they felt the same way, but didn't know what to do about it. Priests have been hired before. The closest church is very busy, they explained. When these things happen... The priests and followers will pray and hold sermons for their cause, often visiting the homes to bring a calming presence along with their faith. All the while, the victims' families continue to keep up the hope that these random acts of terror will cease, only to yield little to no effect against whatever force was sucking this town's happiness and apparent life force dry day by day. The police chief upon my interview spoke about these inexplicable things that happened around here, especially involving a corpse. The deaths occurred mainly during the night, after the coroner comes back with the report and times of death. But no doubt there were unexplainable occurrences that left the medical examiners baffled. 
He explained that once there was a boy who went walking into the woods early one morning and never came back. Two weeks later, the boy's body was found. However, the body was somehow changed. Apparently, the boy had mutations. Small bone-like appendages clawing through his wrists and elbows. The dead lad had these strange, gnarled fangs, and his eyes were bulging out of their sockets. He was found in this state bloated in a small body of water in the same woods, and the family swore they never knew what happened and couldn't possibly understand what it meant. This... This got me thinking... I've heard of cryptid transformations before, sure, but usually they are through horrible ancient rituals wherein the victim, or in some cases, willing person even, would either have their organs taken as an offering to become undead or to perhaps take in a foreign substance after something was given up, both causing their anatomy to change. But for a six-year-old to be forced into doing something like that, or that the boy did it himself, was completely out of the question. This was something else. I visited the boy's home and spoke with the parents. They showed me some of his drawings before they went into those woods. The one that stands out the most is back at the town's forensic lab, being scanned for things that may be out of the ordinary, like fingerprints or something like microscopic fibers or residue that are non-human. I'll be sure to snap a picture and link back to that later once I get back to the station, but let me tell you something. The amount of limbs this thing had, I I don't think that child could have come up with it on his own, especially with several red marked frowning faces attached at the ends of them with little black lines around the heads, giving off the appearance of, of bleeding childlike sons. When I went to walk back to my car after I'd spoken to that family, I could distinctly make out the dark smudges near my door's handle. Upon looking inside, there was nothing but the creeping thought that something was near my vehicle during that time looms over me, and my only conclusive thought is that it tried to get to me because I've been investigating this town for too long. I hadn't survived this far if I didn't know when to take a hint. My head was entirely on a swivel. Driving from then on has me constantly looking in the rear view and to the back seat. I even felt like I had to get a car wash just to clean away the reminder near my door handle. I've... I've never had anything supernatural get this close to me, and I don't think I'll ever get over that anytime soon. O all of this has made me feel sheer and utter dread for the first time in my life. No matter how bizarre this case is, no matter how many people have died, and no matter what else may happen in that town, I will not be going into those woods to find anything out. I know better. <clears throat> This will be my official report, and a warning to you. As for them, the people in the town I mean, well... This is above my pay grade. I've informed the husband he can keep the rest of his money. With the state his house and life is in, he'll need every penny. And I already feel bad for charging the poor guy before. But the only answers he needs are away from that town and those woods. I won't bring myself to dig my own grave. Maybe that task force agency will somehow listen to me if I reach out. Or listen to this. If you have any ideas, I say keep them to yourselves. I won't be involving myself with it once I post this. I truly believe that whatever this thing is, it's the cause of all the misery and carnage that's happening in this Floridian town in the middle of nowhere. 
because I got a call from the police chief I spoke with about the boy that was burned alive. He had just received the autopsy report and explained that those same bone-like appendages were sticking out of his limbs as well. And so we've come to the end of our narration today. I hope you've enjoyed this particular story a lot and please do consider to like, comment and eventually subscribe if you feel particularly wonderful today. Don't forget to have a look at the description as there you will find a link to this particular story and also to their creator who I can promise you has much more work under their belt if you want to read more. And on this final note I'd also want to invite you to have a look at our Patreon page which you will also find down in the description. From there you may aid the channel in its ultimate goal to be free from the guidelines and rules that YouTube has established upon independent creators. And lest I forget the multitude of bonuses you will receive as an official member of our Patreon page. Until our next session, this has been Dr. Torment bidding you adieu. And remember, don't fall asleep. Ever.